everyone. Uh, this is Ken Montero, President for MCAEC 2020-2021. On behalf of the Executive Board, I would like to invite you all to this first virtual Montifest celebration and a very happy Montifest to each one of you. Uh, this Montifest celebration is brought to you in collaboration uh, between the MCAEC and the MCA of DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Due to the current uh, COVID situation, uh, you know, it's, it's not possible for us to all congregate and meet together, uh, but this virtual event is the best that we have and all of us can meet together in spirit and online. Uh, we have a wonderful program lined up for all of you, starting with the mass celebrations uh, led by our spiritual director, Father Ron, and that will lead us into the cultural events where there's going to be a lot of fun uh, activities to look at. Uh, so see you right after mass. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Muslims. If you look at chapter 3, and I had the good fortune of going for these classes when I was in Abu Dhabi in 1983. If you look at the church chapter, they mention of two people. One is Imran and the other is Anna. And they get the birth of a baby girl uh, in their lives called Mary. So it is there as well that you come to know that Mary's parents' names and the life of Mary. But interestingly, in that chapter, there's a verse called Hadith, H-A-D-I-T-H. And in that tradition, it says that only two people were kept away from Shaitan. And one of them was Jesus, the other was Mary. Only two people ever to be kept away from original sin or from Satan. So how does Mary play a role in your life and my life in this great feast day? So we're going to look at two aspects of this festival, of this feast. The first is from the heavenly point of view. God was preparing Mary from before to be the new Eve so that she would crush the head of the serpent, that there would be a change and there would be a new encounter and a new resurrection and a new life and a new state of grace so that the old Eve is removed and the new Eve is here. So Mary was prepared. So from the heavenly point of view, Mary was a baker. Mary was one who God would use to bring about salvation for his chosen people, for you and for me. The other aspect of the feast is where it applies to us. And this is one of faith, one of salvation, one of grace. And you can look to Mary to see how you and I can live. What is the ideal life? And Mary says it very clearly. If you look at Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 48, I think, or 38. In that, it says, she says, when, when the angel Gabriel comes to her and says, Mary, you're going to have a, 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 a son, a child. And she says, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. We only recognize those words. But what about the next line that she says? She says, Be done to me according to thy word. And that is what this feast is about. Be it done in your life and in my life what God wills, what God wants in our life. But we are not open to it. And if you look at the Magnificat a little later in the same chapter, Mary goes to her cousin Elizabeth and right there uh, the, the, womb, uh, the womb of, uh, of, uh, of Elizabeth gets shaken up because John the Baptist is keeping inside. And then she says, how can this be that the mother of my Lord has come to visit me? And then Mary exalts in praise and she says, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior because he has chosen me and all generations will call me blessed, holy is his name, and he has made all things good. So when you and I look at this current situation today, when you look at your life and my life today, are we grateful? Are we thankful? Are we exalting and joy that what God has done for us in our lives? This is what this feast is about. It's not, it is got all the tradition attached to it, but the significance of this feast is to look to Mary for two things. One is her life in God. Mary had a deep interior life with God, constantly, always, uh, you know, accompanying uh, Jesus uh, wherever he went. But she had the Spirit of God in her, right from the time of her uh, birth. So God used Mary. And so Mary had a great interior life, constantly in the presence of God. So where is your life and my life in this presence? Where do you and I see the presence of God constantly in our life? Or do we come to God at random moments, asking, 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 but never finding, never seeking, never turning our soul over to God? And this feast is encouraging us and asking us, where is your interior life with God? Yes, all of us are baptized as Catholics. All of us are baptized as Christians. We all come to God. But in that heavenly experience, the Trinitarian experience that Mary had, you and I have the same thing. By virtue of our baptism, we have the Spirit of God in our souls. It's called sanctifying grace. We can tap into this grace at any moment of our life. It is this grace that sustains us. It is this grace that holds us. It is this grace that gives us life. And this sanctifying grace is us for the asking. It is in us. St. Paul says, don't you know you are the temple of the 
from the lineage of David, Mary was born. And we also have that, that God used Mary as an intervention. He used her so that he can come into your life and my life. And that's what we celebrate in this feast. That interior life of Mary, that sanctifying grace that you and I had, so that we can go to Jesus through Mary. St. Louis de Montfort, when he was speaking, and he was writing on a thesis with regard to what St. Antoninus did, he said these words, God collected all the waters together and named them the ocean or the sea. But then what he wanted to do, he collected all the graces, all the graces in the world, and he put it in one place, in one person, and that person is Mary. That's why we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. But then we turn around and ask ourselves, Am I full of grace? Is the Lord with me? How does my life show this? As a Mingleian Catholic Christian, does my life show and lose this Jesus in my life? Does, do I have to go to Mary in order to get to Jesus? Or do I just do it for the sake of tradition? But there's no interior change in my life. There's no change of heart. And so this feast is begging us to turn the corner, to go to Mary, to Jesus, or to We can do everything good. I, for one, uh, tried to, uh, my mother taught me a lesson. So, since 2009, there's not a single day that has gone by that I've not taught my mother in India, no matter which part of the world I've been in, since 2009, including this morning. Before 2009, there's not a day or a week or a month gone by that I've not written to on a daily basis with letters or with emails or with telephone calls, you know, with the coin collector or with the telephone cards. So from my earliest childhood, I remember I have a connection with my mother. That is beyond everything else. And so my mother told me once, Pata, you are a good son, but that's not enough. You are a good son. You've got to be a holy son. And so that got me thinking. So what does that holiness call for? What does that holiness mean? It just means this, that no matter what work I do, external works, they are of little value if I'm not in a state of grace and not in union with God. No matter what I do in society, no matter what I do for the poor, no matter what I do for the downtrodden, no matter what I do for the church, it is of no uh, in proportion, uh, you know, or it is of value only in proportion uh, to the state of grace that my life is in and my union with God. And so we go back to our lives and see where do I stand? Are we doing works to be good people? Are we doing works because we are holy people? And this is what this feast is about. This feast is a calling for us to look at Mary and say, Yes, Mary, you are full of grace. The Lord is with you and also with me. And I turn to you for strength. I turn to you so that I can idealize you. I can look at you and I can say, Yes, my life can be different because Mary is in my life. And from Scripture, I know God has intervened with her. God has shown us power. God has shown us presence. And God is also working in me. And that is what this feast is begging us to do, to have recourse to Mary, so that we can go through Mary to Jesus. And at the end of time, just as that joke I told in the beginning, she will open the gates for us, seeing our works, and calling us to be at the foot along with her son. Mary is for the glory of my name, I did not my father when I was six years old. My father was in Africa, I never saw for 20 years, and I grew up in my name. So my first question to my aunt was, what am I doing? She said, don't worry, I have a mother for you. And she introduced me to 
Oh, oh, oh.